I'm sure you've all heard of what RetroPie is and what it can do. But what can Amlogic boxes do? They are cheaper and they tend to be a lot more powerful as well. Although they do tend to come on very cheap hardware. So that can be a bit of a, a negative in that respect. But over the years we've uh, featured many different retro gaming developments for Amlogic. One in particular was Scott Elec. That was one of our own developments. We spent many moons working on and bringing to you guys. But now we have a brand new release by a developer known as Shanti. This is by the name of Emu Elec and it's available for your Amlogic generic device. Even the latest versions of Amlogic boxes featuring S905 X2, for example, really quite interesting. So this is based on Coralek, and yeah, this is basically RetroPie, but for Amlogic, in a sense. It's kind of like Batch Series, if you've ever seen that, and yeah, very interesting. So today I'm going to be showing you how to install it, and how to run it on your Amlogic box. I'm just going to be using an S905 W device, which is this, this X96 Mini, my trusty little device. So first step is first, we need to download Emulec. Now we've got a couple of different versions. We've got the Amlogic.ng files, that is for the latest Amlogic devices, with the latest processors, and just this generic download just here. I'm going to be downloading that one. And this is for S905, S905 WX, and S912, etc. So once we've got that, we need to write it onto an SD card. I advise you use a pretty decent SD card, like a SanDisk Ultra card, and use Win32 Disk Imager to write that image onto it. You can, of course, use Etcher or some other program, but they all work basically the same. Once you've written it to your SD card, then you need to go inside your SD card and find a, a file called a DTB file. There's already one there, delete it and go into the folder that says device trees. In here we can see a bunch of different files and these are basically files for Amlogic motherboards and they're kind of like a, a map of your motherboard if that makes sense. So we need to choose the right one for your device. You might not be able to get the correct one, of course. It just really depends if the developer's been able to get hold of your hardware. So it's not always, you know, plain and simple, basically. But the majority of boxes should be supported, at least. So here we have the range of device trees. Here we have P212. This is for S95X. So choose the right one for your device and copy it and paste it into the root of the SD card, basically where we just deleted the other device tree. Paste it into there, rename it dtb.image, and that is it. We can now go over to our TV and see if Emu Elec will boot. Most TV boxes will require you to hold in something like the AV reset button. Not all TV boxes have it inside the AV button. Of course, it might be underneath, it might be on the side. It'll be somewhere on your TV box. Some TV boxes, don't require it at all and just boot straight into it so it really is a case of just having a go and seeing what happens hopefully you'll see this emu elec um, slash screen if not then unfortunately you will have to go back to your pc and try a different device tree So once you've successfully booted Emu Rec, the system will now ask you to actually set up a joystick controller or a joypad like an Xbox One controller of some sort. Here I have is this handmade wooden box that I've implemented a joystick setup into it. I've stained it as well and it looks quite nice I think. So you don't have to use something like that, an Xbox controller would work just fine, be it a 360 or an Xbox One controller or some other USB style controller will work just fine. So now we need to transfer our ROMs to our Emu Elect system. Now this is basically the same as RetroPie but for you guys who maybe aren't familiar with the transfer of ROMs. And basically we're going to be using a piece of software called WinSCP. You 
You could of course use FileZilla or some other file transfer system. I'm going to be using WinSCP. So install that on your PC. So we need to connect our device to our router. So I'm going to be using an Ethernet cable. You can of course use Wi-Fi. Again, like I mentioned before, Wi-Fi might not be working. So Ethernet is the way to go. And then what we need to do is we need to find the IP address of our device. As we can see on screen, we can just go into the system settings and find the device information and find our IP address once it's connected to the internet. Take a note of that IP address, go back to your computer, load up WinSCP. It will then ask you for some login information. The user is root and the password is emu -ilek. And once we're in there, then we can basically start transferring files such as our ROMs. So all we need to do is we need to find the folder name storage and then find the folder name ROM, go into there and then we need to create our folders for our ROMs. So for Nintendo Entertainment Systems, we would call it NES, NES, create a folder named NES and so on basically, so PlayStation, PSX, etc. And in those folders, you need to transfer your ROMs. Now, ROMs is a whole different video in itself, but if you're not familiar with what a ROM is, then I suggest you go and do a bit of research because that could take an entire different video just to explain that. So yeah, go into storage, go into ROMs, and then f create the folders appropriate for the ROMs you have, and then, once all that's done, once you've transferred your ROMs, go back onto your emu elect system, restart emulation station, and it should start populating the system with everything that you've just added. So there we have it guys, that's how to install and set up emu elect. There's of course a lot more to it, there's a lot of settings we can go into, but that's something you're going to have to discover for yourself because we're going to be here literally all day talking about it. So let's leave you with some gameplay footage. Thanks for watching guys and we shall see you in the next one.